Hi there. My name is Nathan Ball, Head of Game Design at Adinmo, and this is episode 10 of our in-game play design guide series. In this episode we'll be looking at the placement settings options that are available from Adinmo, and how you can use those settings to make your in-game play integration look great and deliver great revenue. You'll find the placement setting controls in the Adinmo Developer Portal. From the Overview page, go to your Game page by clicking on its title. Here you'll be able to view the list of ad placements in your game. All of the settings we're about to discuss can be applied on a per placement basis, so choose the placement you want to adjust and click on its name to open the placement settings screen. Now that you're here, there are four main settings you can adjust for your placement. First, and most important among these, is the option to set the aspect ratio of your placements. The available aspect ratios are divided into three tiers here on the portal. Priority, Additional and Unsupported. Some aspect ratios are in higher demand from advertisers than others, and as such will generate more revenue for you if you use them in your game. These ratios are found in the Priority tier. We recommend that you always aim to use a priority ratio for your placements if possible, but the options in the other tiers are there for when the available space for ads in your game just doesn't match up with any of the priority ratios. The next setting you can adjust here is Placement Fit. This determines the range of ad sizes your placement will accept. The options here are Exact, Tight, loose and very loose. Choosing exact will only allow ads that match the size of your placement perfectly to be delivered, while choosing very loose will allow ads that are between 60% and 167% of the size of your placement to be shown. Tight and loose lie in between these. These options let you make a trade-off between perfect visuals and revenue, and since you can change them on a per placement basis, they let you take advantage of ads in your game that are less prominent or in larger spaces. For example, if your ad placement is set up as a poster on a large wall, it can scale up and down without impacting the effect of the ad at all. In an instance like this, you can use the very loose placement fit option, which will increase your revenue opportunities without changing the player's ad experience. For ads in tighter locations, where ads out with their original size would create a bad visual experience, you can use the exact option to ensure that doesn't happen. Next up we have background settings. This lets you control the space around the delivered ads in your game, in terms of colour. If you're using a placement fit option other than exact, there's a chance that an ad smaller than your ad placement will be delivered. In cases like this, Letterboxing is applied around the edges of your ad to compensate. You can control the colour of this letterboxing using the first two background setting options. Calculated Colour uses an algorithm, setting the colour of your letterboxing to match the average RGB value of the edges of the delivered ad each time, and Fixed Colour lets you choose a colour which will always be used when letterboxing is applied to the placement. In most cases, Calculated colour is the best option to go for, since it will blend your ads in automatically, but fixed colour can be useful if you're using a frame object, such as a billboard or photo frame, since you can set the colour of your letterboxing to the same colour as the frame. The final background setting, Shrink to Fit, changes the size of the placement to match the delivered ad. It will also resize the parent object of your placement. So if you're using a framing object, it will dynamically adjust to fit the new size of the placement. This is a great option to use in areas where the size of the placement doesn't matter, or for certain framing devices such as floating digital screens, where the change in size makes sense to the player to an extent. Finally, you may wish to consider using the option to adjust the cycle extension time for some, or all, of your ad placements. 
This is the time it takes for a new ad to be displayed after a valid impression has been made. The default value for this is set to 4 seconds, but you can increase this value up to 30 seconds, or set it anywhere in between. This is a useful tool for placements in prominent locations, where a frequent change of ad may distract the player. For smaller placements, or those framed in a way that justifies a quicker rate of change, such as city billboards, you can leave it at the minimum, or just increase the extension time slightly. Again, this is an option that allows you a trade-off between player experience and monetization, which is why we recommend looking at each of your placements individually, and finding the right balance for each. That's all for this episode of In-Game Play Design Guide. Join us next time for some handy tips on how to test and optimise your ad placements. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we post new in-game advertising content. I've been Nathan Ball, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.